people both angry and confused that there was a second Mewtwo. And honestly, I understand the confusion. Uh, for those of you, I mean, if you've seen the, the first Pokemon movie, you know that Mewtwo pretty much killed all the scientists that created him and blew up the lab that he was created in. He was, and then if, when you see Mewtwo returns, or I think I was at the second one where Mewtwo comes in, you see he's perfectly happy living his life with, you know, all the clones. You know, he's just perfectly happy there, so, I don't know. Some people theorize that he, some people said he created this second Mewtwo. Uh, others say that someone else created it. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. Maybe it's explained that. I don't know. Oh yeah, and welcome to the next part of Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses. And in this episode, we will be getting into our first duel against Weevil Underwood. So, yeah. Uh, Weevil isn't too bad. I mean, yeah, he has his great moth, and his great moth can take a while. But he, you don't, he doesn't really use his Great Moth to attack you unless you get a little too close for comfort. You know, he won't send it out. He, well, he, he'll summon it, but the whole reason he summons it is because it weakens your monsters on each turn. Uh, but he won't send it out to attack you or anything. He just kind of lets it sit there. And he always plays it in the top left corner, so if that helps you any... Like, if you can get a monster above... I don't know how much power is his, uh, cocoons. I don't know what the attack power of his cocoons are. I don't know, because his great moth attack, attack power is 4,000, and I don't think it's possible to make a monster that powerful. Yeah. That's Weevil's whole plan is, you know, his deck's built around getting out of his great moth. And now that this is our first duel, I'll explain how this game works. Each turn you get a certain amount of duel points or summoning points, I don't remember what they're called. And you can use these points to, you know, play monsters. You can also play trap cards, trap and spell cards also. Um, you place up to five of each, you know, you can place either, you have up to five monsters and you can have up to five spell and traps. Now, spell and traps count as one thing, obviously. But spell and traps do not count against, do, do not require you to use any dual points, I guess. And also you start with 4,000 life points, so yeah. The goal of the game is to basically, like every other Yu-Gi-Oh game, uh, get your opponent's life points down to zero. Now you can go about doing this several different ways. You can destroy their monsters, you know, while they're in attack mode, because, you know, defense mode doesn't let them destroy anything. You can play spell and traps that will weaken their life, that will decrease their life points. And you can, or you can, you know, if you're lucky enough, you can go up to their deck master. I'm just gonna call it deck master. It has a name, but I don't remember what it is. Um, you go up to their deck master and attack it, and you know that's like direct, you know, a direct attack to them. But you have to work your way up to the deck master before you can attack it. Now you can also move your deck master around and stuff, and you and you can move your monsters around. You can move your monsters and your spells and traps and whatnot around. Um, and if they're, and depending on what kind of field you're battling on, like, as you're seeing, you know, I have mountain ranges around my deck master, because a lot of the monsters in my deck do well, uh, in mountain ranges. You know, certain monsters, you know, gain, if they're, if a monster is in a, it's, if a monster is in a range that it's good in, it will gain attack points, it'll gain attack and defense points, and it'll also be allowed to move farther than it normally would. It'll be allowed to go an extra space than it normally could. Also, some monsters that didn't have special abilities before... Oh. Uh, like, you know, some, I don't know, some of these monsters that didn't have special abilities in the actual card game may actually have special abilities here, such as Spellbinding. Now, what Spellbinding does is it prevents your monsters from moving, basically. It prevents whatever monster is spellbound from moving for a set amount of turns, unless they're, like, eternally spellbound, in which case they can never be moved ever again. Uh, 
Um, the closest this comes, I could think of this being represented in the anime would be the uh, three-episode duel of, of Yugi and Joey versus uh, the Paradox Brothers. But yeah, you can also fuse together monsters that you may not think fuse together. You know, just to see what will happen, to see what kind of monsters you can get out of it, and you know, if you're, you know, uh, it's not really luck based. Of, you know, if you ha can memorize what monsters fuse with what, then you're good. You know, you have it down. Hmm. <clears throat> but yeah. Whew. What else can I go over? Um, oh yeah, the other way of winning would be, you know, summoning Exodia, but, you know, Exodia is near impossible to summon in my, or at least for me, so I wouldn't bother going with that, unless you're really lucky. You know, and you have all the pieces of them in your deck. Oh, in, or in order to challenge someone, like they said before, you have to have, your deck has to be at a lower cost than your opponent's. And you can see how much their deck is worth, um... You know, when you first challenge them, it'll tell you how much their deck is worth. Um, you are not allowed to challenge them if your deck is worth more than theirs. If your deck is more powerful than theirs, they have to be around the same strength. I'm guessing is what dual cost means. But yeah. That's basically it. Uh, now that I think about it, that's basically the whole thing you need to know about the game. Um, there are some, you know, some special fields that we'll get into that when those come around. Those special fields don't come into play in Weevil's Duel. Like, there's the Crush spaces, there's the Labyrinth spaces, but those aren't involved in Weevil's Duel. In Weevil's Duel, it's mostly Wasteland and Forest, unless you have a field card, in which case, like I did, you know, I surrounded myself with mountains, because my monsters do amazing in mountains. You know, they gain power boosts from being in mountain ranges. But yeah, that's just basically how you play the game. It's, you know, just think of it as like Yu-Gi-Oh! Chess, I guess. Where, where you're trying to protect your king or your deck master. Um, oh, and the card that you start off with your deck master won't always be your deck master. It can. Um, your deck master doesn't have any special abilities like in the anime. As far as I know, they don't. Um, but you can have other monsters be your deck master, but that's... I don't know how that's really determined. Just like out of nowhere, it will tell you, hey, this monster has been leveled up to lieutenant or captain or whatever, and it will allow you to use that monster as your deck master. And the one that previ was previously your deck master is now. Uh, uh, just a regular monster you can summon and have it attack. Your deck masters cannot attack. They do not have any attack or defense points until you. You know, you get another monster to be yours. So, yeah. So, even if you have, like, the most powerful card in existence as your deck master. It still won't matter. They could still attack your deck master with ease and make you lose life points. Yeah, I know. I spent most of the episode explaining how to play the game, but still, that's basically all I know of how to play the game. I mean, if I forgot something, feel free to tell me, and I'll explain it in the next episode. You know, or I can just explain it in the comments. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I mean, I hope you guys think that, I mean, this is, like I put in my 
you know, top five personal favorite, you know, card battle games. This is one of my favorites, mostly because of how unique it is. And also how challenging it is. This game is really difficult if you're not if you're not really prepared or not really knowing how to play the game. Yeah. It can be really difficult. Hopefully we can power through this, even though I've never beaten the game before in my life. That's helping me try to find some kind of temporary job so I can get out of my own house and do something. The only places that are hiring me temporary job are like cleaners and stuff like that. Like suit cleaners. And there's only two in the area. One in the town that I live in, and there's one all the way in St. Peter's, St. Charles, I don't know. One of those two. And that's like, it might be like, uh, probably like a 30 minute drive or something. And, you know, <laughs> for nine, and that pays nine bucks an hour, and that's not really worth it, especially with, you know, gas prices being how they are. And the other one pays, I think it was 10 bucks an hour, 9 or 10. Damn it, phone! Shut up, phone. Don't mess your phone. Don't care, phone. The phone went off. Huh. Don't forget that you could leave a viewer suggested, uh, a, you can leave a suggestion for a future LP in the comments below. <laughs> no, if you feel like it, you don't, know, whatever. Doo doo. And I went to the library again and checked out another movie. Uh, this movie I've checked out before, but I didn't have I didn't get the chance to watch it. It's a Terminator Salvation or something. I don't know. I heard it was really bad. But it, it was on my list of movies to check out. And, well, the entire Terminator series was on my list. And I don't know. I haven't seen the first two or three Terminator movies. I don't know. Is Terminator Salvation the third or fourth one? How many Terminator movies are there? I know there's at least two. Because there's Ter the Terminator and there's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Was there Terminator 3 or is Terminator Salvation Terminator 3? I think it was Terminator 3. So yeah, I think um, um, Salvation is the fourth one. Right, Christian Bale and Sam Worthington and stuff. I don't know. Heard a lot of bad things about it. So I'm prepared to watch a really terrible thing. Then again, there's some movies people say are terrible, and I actually end up enjoying them. You know, I'm thinking that, you know, people may just be giving the movie a lot of bad credit for no reason whatsoever. People getting all nostalgic about how it's not how it used to be, or it's, you know, this movie doesn't follow the plotline of the previous movies. 
or this is a remake, it doesn't 